Greetings everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, and welcome to the latest episode of Monday Musings, where I talk about games, shows, life, books, all the various things that are going on in my world, and cover what I've done over the past week. This is my weekly decompress blog slash blog. I used to write blogs many, many years ago. I wrote blogs for many years on marginal boundaries. Um, and over the years, after having done somewhere in the ballpark of like 20 million words of content around the world for clients and everything else, I was like, you know what? I much prefer the video format because I can just sit here and talk. So that's what these are. Let's see. Uh, first up, let's talk about a show that my wife and I just watched over the weekend on Netflix called Jupiter's Legacy. Now, I knew nothing about the comic books going into this. I have since read a little bit about the comic books. And from what I understand, the show is a very loose interpretation of the various comics. Um, and again, I say interpretation because from what I can tell, um, they're doing an adaptation, so to speak. So the events of the show do not match the events of the first comic series from what I understand. It's bits and pieces from all the prequels and series and everything else. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, the one thing I didn't like about the show, uh, and this is somewhat of a spoiler alert, um, so I'll try to keep it non-spoilerly. How do I say this? Um, you, There's this they're doing flashbacks. I'm, I'm trying to think of a way to do this without breaking the story. They're doing flashbacks to basically it's, it's in the present with flashbacks to a time before all of the individuals had superpowers. So there was an event that happened, which gave them their superpowers. This is a common theme and, and I'm not spoiling anything by saying this is the common theme in many superhero stories. And the flashbacks um, are interesting, and they tell a backstory, and it's very important. But, oh my god, does it take them six of the eight episodes to actually get to the point where you find out how everything happened. Um, and both Chris and I were ready by, like, episode three. It was like, okay, come on, you're dragging this thing. Like, we just, we want to know. Episode four, we're like, really? Five, it's like, come on. And by episode six, it was like this gasp of relief when they finally got to that point in the show. Um, what I do like about the show a lot is just the, the overall story. Um, take the one thing that's hard, a little bit hard is, is the hair and makeup is not the best I've seen in a show. Special effects are really good, but the hair and makeup is, eh, it's very obvious who's wearing fake beards and fake hair and wigs. Um, and, um, because they had to age all of the actors, um, that's fairly noticeable. But it, you know, that that being aside, the story is well told, and I'm actually intrigued enough that I've been I've spent probably three hours now on on, on Google just reading up about the various comics, which is probably spoiling to some degree the upcoming. Assuming it gets renewed for a second season, it, it might be spoiling some of what's coming up. Um, but I will say that we were both, and no spoilers here, we were both shocked by the last episode. There there was a plot twist that we, we should have seen coming, that we didn't see coming. Um, it's a very good show. Uh, it's good science fiction grounded in reality. If you've ever watched The Boys on Amazon, this has similar notes of that, but instead of the superhero... Uh, you know, in, in, in the boys, the superhero group is all about, um, you know, movies and, and marketing their value as superheroes and making money off of that as a business. And so it's all about commercialization of superheroes. This takes the same concept of lots of superheroes on the planet. Um, and there is a group that oversees all of the good guys and... You know, they work in conjunction with the federal government, but it's not, they're not commercialized. It's its a completely different thing where they try very hard not to, you know, get in the way of, of humanity, of morality, of, excuse me, of um, 
the morality of, of mortals. They try really hard not to interfere because the one of the core concepts of the code that they that they have to govern them is about you know make, making sure that that mortals have free will and maintain free will uh, because given their godlike status, it would be really easy to just take over and rule the world as gods. Um, so. Again, I'm trying really hard not to spoil anything because it's only been out for you know a few days. It hasn't even been out for a week yet, I don't think, so I don't want to spoil anything. But I would say that if you haven't watched it yet, I would highly recommend that you put it on your watch schedule. It's called Jupiter's Legacy. It's on Netflix. It's eight episodes. They're between – they're not that long. They're like 35 to 45-minute long episodes, so it's really not that long of a show to watch. Um definitely worth your time it was worth our time we highly enjoyed it um and i'm keeping my fingers crossed that they renew it for a season two speaking of comic books i'm pretty sure i just read let me look at this again pretty sure that alan moore just signed a contract the other day yes so for those of you who don't know who Alan Moore is, Alan Moore is the creator of Watchmen. Um, he's done a lot of comic book stuff. So he's done uh, graphic novels. So he's done The Watchmen, V for Vendetta, Batman the Killing Joke, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, From Hell, Promethea, The Courtyard, etc. He's earned 23 Eisner Awards. Um, Anyway, he's, you know, pretty much the first few I mentioned, Watchmen, V for Nana, Batman, League of Looks, Sword, all of those things have been adapted into films of some type. And they've, a lot of those, like uh, the, the Batman Killing Joke, I believe, was an award winning animated film in the Batman franchise. And it's known for being like one of the most adult versions. And the Watchmen comic series um, and consequent movie, and then the HBO edition that they did last year, which was freaking amazing and i'm so happy that they did it as a one and done if you have not watched the hbo version of watchmen please please do it it's another adaptation it was so well done um and brilliant in the fact that it was a we're doing it it's one season limited series and we're out the door as opposed to trying to make it into this three season thing and i like the watchmen movie as well anyway alan moore signed and he's getting up there in age too um but he just signed. Where did it go? He announced. He, he announced. He's going to be writing a collection of short stories titled Illuminations, and then something called Long London, which is a fantasy quintet, published by Bloomsbury. Um, the Long London is going to be a move from the shell-shocked and unraveled London of 1949 to a version of London just beyond our knowledge, encompassing murder, magic, and madness. Bloomsbury said it promises to be epic and unforgettable, a tour de force of magic and history. So um, this is up by, I'm going to drop the link to this in the video when we get um, this uploaded, but it's over at Screen Rant is this thing. Um, but I love Alan Moore's works. And I think it's really cool to see that he's now going to be working on a fantasy series, a, a quintet. So I'd say, and I think the first one is supposed to be 2024. I'd have to go look at the press release again. Because um, he announced his retirement in 2019. Um, let me go find this again. I'm trying to find the original press release. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, he's 67 years old. Okay, the first, yeah, the, the the collection of short stories is going to be published in autumn of 2022, and the first novel in the Long London Fantasy Quintet, which is going to be in 2024. So this is, you know, he's he's got a few years. He's going to be working on the short stories for the next couple of years, basically, and then, well, at least for the rest of this year into next year, and then moving into production of the novel after that. Grade A stuff for those of you who like comic books and novels, fantasy books, so on and so forth. Also, highly anticipating the two upcoming shows, really. Um, first and foremost is the Wheel of Time show that Amazon is doing. First season is going to be eight episodes. Um, it's up in the air. I don't, you know, they're keeping things pretty tight under lock and key, which is understandable. 
Um, they've also suffered production delays because of COVID. Um, but it's looking, uh, you know, they did another teaser. Uh, German Amazon Prime, I believe, did another teaser um, last week of Moraine, like a five second clip or whatever. But you can see like a troll lock running in the background and stuff. So they've been teasing some stuff out. They, they just showed a character of, of, they showed the actor who plays Lan um, in, like, fully in character and everything else. They did a great. Uh, photo shot of him in costume and everything so i you know if i had to because there's two one is the the middle earth show that amazon is doing you know which is set during the second age i'm looking forward to that one and then there's the wheel of time but here's the thing if i had to take those two and say which one i'm anticipating more it's definitely the wheel of time show and the reason for that is because as much as i love middle earth I've gotten plenty of Middle Earth enjoyment in my lifetime. You know, I've read the shit out of all of those books. I've watched the animated versions multiple times, not all of which are that great. Um, I've watched the extended editions of the movies so many times, it's not even funny. I've watched the behind the scenes footage at least half a dozen times over the years. Uh, I've, I've got to play lots of great middle earth lord of the rings video games over the years um i'm still playing lord of the rings online i am very much you know i've, I've gotten my money's worth so to speak out of the middle earth world and lore but all i've ever done is read the wheel of time multiple times i think i've read the entire series through three times and I say that because I know I've read the first like five books, <laughs> like five or six times each. Cause you know, that was when I was, those were coming out when I was a teenager and I was just like rah, 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 eating them up. Um, and then he got to the point where he was taking like two and three years between, and then he died and you know, it was an unfortunate thing. But by the time he got to like book nine, I was well into my adulthood and I, I, I had reread the first ones. Like any time a new one would come out, I would go back and like reread. And so, you know, I think because I think the first time I found them, they were already on a Shadow Reborn, which I think is book four or book five. I'm going to go look right now. And I'm going to tell you because I don't know. Wheel of Time publishing dates. Let's look at this. And I'm going to tell you, 90, 90, yeah, so I found it, yeah, it would have been, I'm going to look at the cover and make sure that I'm not mistaken, nope, it was, I would have discovered it in 92, because it was just, 92 or 93, I'm not sure which year, because that, you know, I would have been 12 in 92 and 13 in 93, and I remember the book, the, I'm looking at the cover of The Shadow Rising, and, and that cover and then the cover of The Dragon Reborn were the two covers that was like, I got to get in. And, and they had all four of the books at my library. So I was able to read Eye of the World, Great Hunt, Dragon Reborn, Shadow Rising, and was like, I read them all, and then I immediately reread them. And then I had to wait, you know, a year. And then Lord of Chaos was the next year, and then A Crown of Swords was two years after. So, but yeah, by the time I got to book nine, one, two, three, four, four yeah, I, I read the first, like, few books five or six times but the whole series all the way through i think i've only done and i'm lying when i say that i haven't read it all the way through three times i have read up to book 11 um three times but i've only read brandon sanderson's books one time um so books 12 13 and 14 um i've only read one time anyway i'm i'm rambling at this point what I wanted to say was that uh, I'm really looking forward to the Wheel of Time show, and I hope to do it justice. I really hope that it doesn't turn out like um, the sort of Shinera which MTV did, because the Wheel of Time is a dark show. Um, don't get me wrong, dark books, I should say, a dark story. Um, they were definitely PG-13, family-friendly. You know, there's no sex in those books. I mean, it, w it was. Well, there is, but there's not like sex scenes. There's there's romance that happens, but Jordan was very keen on like keeping things like kind of PG-13, and um, as a result, 
um, even though there's that there's that family friendly. It's a dark story. Whereas Sword of Shannara, um was also had its own darkness. But MTV, when they did it, the one complaint Chris and I both said this when we were watching the show is that everything was bright and pretty, and the actors were like so impossibly thin and beautiful and pretty and handsome and perfect makeup and never got dirty. And it was like this, you know pop music uh infused version that just didn't it wasn't high fantasy it was a like a i don't know what you would call i don't really know what that genre is Uh, it wasn't the genre of the books which is high fantasy it was this like i said every episode had pop music in it because it was inspired you know it was put um the money came from mtv and so they had that aspect of it um and it got canceled after two seasons, and it was very unfortunate. I'm really hoping that because it's Amazon, Amazon's the same company that's putting a billion dollars into the Middle Earth franchise, and I'm really hoping they look at shows like The Witcher and Game of Thrones and shows that those are obviously adult shows, but what I would like to see and hopefully we see out of the the Wheel of Time show is a darker fantasy show that stays true to the fantasy roots. So no poppy you know, bullshit modern music, but, you know, full on medieval scores and, you know, themes. I mean, it's not, it's light versus darkness. It's, it's the dark Lord is not cool, man. Like chase and Rand and the nightmares that they have and the troll locks. I mean, it's all very scary shit. So I'm really hoping that that show is done well. And now I will move on to another theme because otherwise I'll talk about wheel of time all day. Balin's Route is now out on YouTube from Viva La Dirt League. Um, I have not actually watched this yet. It is I'm pre-recording this on Sunday, May 9th. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. The first thing I'm doing as soon as I finish up this episode is I'm going to watch Balin's Route, which is an epic NPC man adventure. This is the short film that they successfully kickstarted last year shot all throughout New Zealand. Uh, this is, this is, you know, if you're not familiar who with who Viva La Dirt League is or who they are, just go look them up on YouTube or Facebook. Um, they do brilliant video productions. You've probably seen some of their short sits somewhere. They have the Epic NPC Man series. They have a PUBG series. They do tabletop gaming. They do lots of different things. Uh, one of the main guys, Rowan, you've seen him in shows. Like, I've seen him pop up in, like, Spartacus and other shows, you know, as, like, a little bit piece, and he gets killed off. Um, so these guys, you know, they're all from New Zealand, and they've been around with their with their Viva, Dirt, Viva La Dirt League um, YouTube channel for, I don't know, five or six. I feel like five or six years now. I don't, I don't actually know the timeline. But um, last year, they took... You know, they've been building this this uh, universe up for this epic NPC man. And they've got all these characters there, like the garlic uh, merchant and the the um, the crying guy, <laughs> you know, and they've added new characters over the years. And of course, one of the famous characters is is Balin, the guy, <laughs> you know, but what a nice day for fishing, ain't it? Um, and so they decided to make this adventure film about the Balin character and him going off and having this this adventure within the epic NPC man world that they've been building up over the past few years with all of these short films and characters. They've done several seasons of the show now. I've been following them for probably two years, maybe three. It might be three years, but I ha- I've been following on for quite a while. Um, and... Um, they did this uh, Kickstarter, successfully funded it. Then they did um, some live streams, anywhere else, uh, over the years since then. And eventually, uh, they just released this nine hours ago. So um, it came out on YouTube today, May 9th. Um, I've, it was literally the first thing I saw when I woke up this morning was I had a notification on YouTube that Balin's route was available. And I was like, yes! But I haven't actually sat down and watched it because I didn't want to spoil it like I almost maybe spoiled jupiter's legacy um but i wanted to watch it after i did my recording for the day so that's going to be what i do next up um i would definitely recommend that you check it out uh i have no doubt that it's going to be amazing i've already seen the trailer and the videography everything looked the quality looks like it's been taken up a notch because they obviously had a bigger budget so they used better cameras better special effects better everything 
Um, so I am looking forward to watching that today. What else can I talk about? Okay. Um, we've got multiple guest speakers. I've already done some new folks on the uh, Mondays and MMRPG show. The first of the new folks, well, let's see. Tomorrow's ep or today's episode, you got to remember that this is actually coming out on May 10th. Um, today's episode is my brother, myself, and Scribbles, who's my regular co host. Next week is. Uh, Scribbles and myself and Judah, a.k.a. Cookie Dragon, from over at Two Kinds Online is, I think, the game that he's building. And then we've got Ash and Phoenix on. I'm going to be recording an episode with him this the evening of Sunday, May 9th, which is when I'm recording this show is on Sunday. Um, I'm recording with him tonight. He's a YouTube, uh, excuse me, he's a Twitch streamer who just does lots of different things and chats about things and does some comedy stuff on Twitch. We're going to be having him on the show to talk about some stuff. And then uh, Tuesday, May 11th, I believe we've got Simmerg, uh, Lord Simmerg from Twitter. He's also the host of the Looking for More podcast. He's going to be on the show. Um, and then we're also going to have Nathan Napalm coming on the show shortly. And we're going to see, ladies and gentlemen, I swore that after the Eridune progression server for EverQuest 1, that it was going to be the last time I did an EverQuest 1 progression server. Um, I've done EverQuest progression servers. I've done every single time they've launched them, I've done one. Um, I've done three of the EverQuest 2 progression servers. I've done the Lord of the Rings Online server. But for EverQuest 1 in particular, I think I've done, it's been, what, six or seven progression servers now i've done project 1999 four times since 2014 i am kind of ever quested out as much as i love that game it's been 20 years um you know my my future is the next generation of games like for example um, mass effect legendary edition is dropping on don't don't quote me on this but i believe it's dropping on friday the 14th i pre-ordered it on the ps4 i plan on just streaming the shit out of that all day saturday and sunday i think i think i'm literally just gonna get up and sat on saturday morning and i'm not gonna be streaming with the camera but i think i'm just gonna get up get it loaded and i'm just gonna stream it all damn day um on saturday and maybe sunday as well so i mean i've got other things again. and at the end of the month i've got celasta coming out but here's the thing I, I think it's on the 26th is when the new progression server drops and here's here's why i say this there's yeah there's some individuals who who are going to be doing a a i'm not gonna say who they are yet because i don't know that i that i can i don't know that they want me to say who they are yet but um I don't know that it's been mentioned yet. Anyway, there is this thing in the works that is, is going to be a group of people getting together, I think all of whom are streamers, and the plan is to stream the adventures on the new EQ1 progression server over the course of basically not sleeping and just going from level one to level 50, however long that takes, and just just grinding it, you know, power level. Because we've seen people do it in, you know, 20 hours or whatever. Twenty Within the first 24 hours, there's people who are level 50. And the idea is that maybe we do a spectacle show out of that. Um, it's not my idea. It's somebody else's idea. It was presented, and I kind of went, hmm. The problem is, I'm old. And I like my sleep. And the idea of not sleeping terrifies me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. But from a publicity standpoint, it's a great publicity stunt to get more followers on YouTube and everything else, and to just talk about the good times and, and hang out with some people and 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 have some fun. And my wife and I have talked about it. She's like, oh, it's just one day. And I'm like, yeah, but what if it's not one day? What if what if it turns out that we have to stream for 40 hours? You know, I can I can make 30 hours. I've done I've done all nighters even in the last year or two. I've done all nighters. But usually when I'm working on other things or I just have insomnia or whatever, not because I'm trying to stay awake and, and you know, doing a stream. 
we'll see. It's it's in it's in the it's in the conversation stages right now, and I might participate in that. Um, if I do, I'll be announcing it here on YouTube uh, to everybody, and we would be doing that. I believe the server goes live on the 26th. So, but I also have to plan around my day job. Um, so because I have commitments there, so we'll see. Um, like I said, the idea of staying up without sleeping terrifies me. It like literally terrifies me. Um, let's see. I guess we're we're 25 minutes in. Let's 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 move over to the project drama updates uh, for the day. Let's see here. Chris has cranked out quite a bit of new concept art. We shared a concept art update. We did a, a social media blast. Um, she's getting way more comfortable with the tablet tools now, and she's been, she still had some practice pieces where she'll spend like two days doing the practice pieces, but like the last two pieces that she's gotten me, she's done them in like six hours or less, which comparatively speaking to her, you know, she was taking triple that for her first few pieces. She's getting better with the tools and her techniques now, and so she's been, she's been able to shave that time down, and I have no doubt that give her another month or two of practicing with the talent, she'll be getting images done in two or three hours now, which would be awesome. So she's working on that. She's getting plenty of images. I think we're up to like 20 plus images now that we're going to be using for the core rule book. Um, and on that front, um, core rule book is moving ahead nicely. I think what we're ending up doing is depending on where we're, I mean, cause we've got all year. Um, let's just talk about this for a bit. I'm going to get comfortable because I was not exactly comfortable sitting in the same place there. Um, the idea is that from from both the adventure game standpoint and the tabletop stuff, I think the original idea was I wanted to get tabletop module core rulebook plus module plus table blah, 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 blah. core rulebook module plus point and click adventure game plus the first novel in the series out by the end of the year. I'm hesitant to say that I will also be able to get the first book out by the end of the year, but it's going to depend on a few things that are yet to be determined um, because of the, mo I've, I've looked at how other people are doing modules and I've realized that if I want my modules to be as competitive as the other modules that are being produced for other tabletop series, I'm going to have to put more time and effort into the modules than I thought in terms of creating maps um, on Incarnate and so on and so forth. So if it takes me longer to do modules, then the book gets pushed back, which I'm okay with that because the primary thing for this is the tabletop plus the um, point and click game. But we're going to see. We're going to see how it all comes together. I've got the outlines pretty much wrapped up. Um, and if you're a subscriber, you've been able to take a look at the outlines as, as the outline for the book has has unfolded. Um, we've got the story laid out, everything else. Um, but we're going to see how that goes because it also just depends on if I, if I just say screw it. I don't want to do that much effort into my campaign modules yet. And I just want the draft 1.0 to be mostly text-based as opposed to needing a bunch of maps and stuff. I can still do that, and I can make the book schedule on time. But if I want to add a bunch of cool maps, maps take time to design, and we're doing all of this in-house. We're not paying other people to do it. Um, so that's, that's where that sits. If people want us to speed up production, that's what the Patreon is for, because once we hit, I believe, $3,000 a month, we hire another artist. Um, so that's going to be the goal, number one. Uh, once we start the marketing push, which is going to be in July, I believe, is when we're going to start doing our first marketing push, um, which we've talked about before in the past. We're doing um, the goal is to have the point and click adventure game demo ready, and then the core rulebook is going to be in a good enough place. It's not going to be completely finished, but it's going to be in a good enough place so that in July we can start running that place that play group through. Um, and doing that first module, that first campaign module, which the first campaign module, I will have all the maps and everything in there because it's the first one and I want it to look good, but I'm thinking long-term for the other modules and everything else. So it's a lot of work. Um, excuse me. 
but it's moving ahead full speed. Joey is wrapped up the the post that just went out Sunday, uh, May 9th, uh, was the, I think it was the last mechanics post for the prototype for the point and click adventure game. I think he's only got one thing left to wrap up, which is the um, cut scene, how, how we're going to do cut scenes so that we can bring the camera in and swoop down over the town and do the cut scenes that we want. Um, once he figures that part out, then he's done with all the mechanics and it's time to start replacing gray boxes with actual 3d assets. And right now, which I've, I've mentioned before, we've got all of our buildings, um, environments. We got our building pack, environment pack, interior pack, and, a, and one props pack. We need, there's a couple other props packs that we're going to build, but because we aren't doing combat, with this first game, it's just puzzles. We don't have to worry about combat. So there's no, we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. We don't have to have stats that are leveling up or any of those things. Um, that's going to be for the second game. The second game might be the third game. Who knows? We might, but we've already talked about this in the past. I mean, we plan on doing, assuming this does well enough to do another one. Where our plan is to, we're going to do at least two point and click adventure games. The third one is going to be the one that we probably evolve unless we get, you know, if we blow it out of the water with budgets and, and everything else, then the second one we might add combat in and, and, and take it to the next level. But otherwise, we're kind of planning in our minds that the third one will be a, a more classic RPG as opposed to a point and click. And you'll actually have stats and combat and we'll have multiple party members and everything else. But that's. We don't talk about that yet. That's that's years down the road. Right now we're focused on the point and click. So we still got a lot of work to do over the next six weeks to get the demo ready. Assuming we can get it all ready by July 1st. Knock on wood. But uh, we're on track. So that's the most important part. And I got to admit, um, it's pretty satisfying. Joey and I, have every time we meet up on Wednesday nights to do our stand-ups, you know, those are only 15 minutes. And we meet at like 8.30 um on wednesday nights and we end up staying up till midnight every single week because we're talking about all this stuff um and it's 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 been pretty it's been pretty exhilarating to see the progress that has been made so quickly um and that's the best part about having spent the last six and a half years doing an mmrpg because scaling back to a single player point and click it's much easier because you don't have to deal with the networking and you don't have to deal with all the myriad things that are going on with an MMO. Um, and so we're able to get things out the door much more quickly, which uh, is great not having to do that dance. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty awesome. So on that front, everything with Project Dramond is moving ahead full speed. Um, I wrapped up classes this past week. On Friday was I didn't do anything yesterday. Uh, Friday I worked on the classes and wrapped those up. So next step is I'm doing the factions. Um, so I'm going in. I'm actually going to be describing the Church of the Elder Ways and the Circle of Mages. We're going to talk about the tiers or the ranking system with each and within each one of those organizations. Um, basically, we're just fleshing out all of the history and the background that players need to know to be able to flesh out the the background of their character. Um, and who their character is in our world and and actually create their character to role play through that first session so that's gonna be a lot of fun um plenty of work cut out for me excuse me during the month of may yeah i'm looking at the wheel of time going mm, i'd love to reread it but no i'm not going to i do not have time right now i'm in the middle of reading Dragonlance stuff, so that's my primary objective right now. And those are such good books. They really are classics. I'm really, really I'm really looking forward to seeing what the new Dragonlance series is gonna is gonna look like. Um, it's been a long time since those two have done something together like this. And I know it was a big enough project that that lawsuit was a ten million dollar lawsuit. So you know it was a it was a big deal when Wizards was like, no, we're going to cancel the, the book series. And they were like, the hell you are. We've already, you know, we've written the first book. We've drafted the second book. We've outlined, you know, we've already put like two years into this. You know, you're not canceling shit. 
took them to court and they won and got reinstated. So I was glad to see that. It's got to stand up for your rights sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. It's worth it. All right. I think that's it for me today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, follow all the links below, join us in Discord, all the other places. And don't forget to check out the next episode of Mondays and MMORPGs, which is coming out later today. And we will see you for all the various other stuff, which I forgot. Like, I've been streaming Star Wars of the Republic for the first time again in a long time. Um, but that won't be very many episodes because I'm just catching up because I want to do a video. Um, main things this month are going to be Star Wars, excuse me, Mass Effect Legendary Edition and Celeste at the end of the month. And, uh, yeah. Stay tuned for all that stuff. See you next time.